Good morning, Cemeterians, and welcome. Um, nice to see you all. Um, this is our hybrid service of Summit uh, Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. My name is Lynn, and I'm service associate for today's service. This is Social Justice Sunday, and uh, we have attendees here who will be doing helping us with readings and contributing to the service because this was an order of service done by committee. So given that, I'm just going to ask you to keep your sense of humor if uh, I end up on the wrong draft, <laughs> but we'll get through it together, okay? <laughs> okay, a few reminders before we begin. Um, in our e-invitation to this Sunday services, there was a reminder that masks are required to be in the sanctuary unless you have taken a rapid COVID test this morning as our speakers have done. Um, our summit board has provided high quality N95 masks in the greeting room for anyone who forgot a mask. Um, remember that we're recording today's service and we'll turn it off for our community gathering afterwards. And um, let's practice again, silencing our cell phones before the service begins. We're going to get back into those practices. We're also going to have a couple of hymns today. If, if uh, Karen comes. <laughs> um, I was sort of on the lookout for her so she could do her prelude. But anyway, okay. Um, so what? Okay. All right, so we'll just wing it. As I said, we're going to roll with it. And, and now Tyler knows why I didn't want to start because I, <laughs> I was looking at the piano. OK, so luckily we have a wonderful speaker today. She's from the Interfaith Shelter Network, and she's going to update us on what's been going on over the last COVID years uh, with their organization and how we might still participate. Okay, Summit is an inclusive community whose shared principles of love and compassion bring us together. We aspire to the principles and purposes that are listed in the back of the order of service. The mission of Summit is to commit ourselves to building a more compassionate, just, and sustainable world. If you are new to Unitarian Universalism or to Summit and would like to know more about us, we invite you to go to our website, summituf.org, click on the visitors button and fill out an online connection card. Someone will follow up with you. Um, we do our land acknowledgement now. We do want to acknowledge that our fellowship resides on unceded Kumeyaay land and that for more than 10,000 years, this land has been and continues to be home to the Kumeyaay people. We recognize the violent history of colonization in California and honor the legacy of the continuing presence of the Kumeyaay nation. Um, now we're going to have our chalice lighting and we're very lucky to have some participation from the Social Justice Committee. Andy will come up and read the words, and Aaron will light the chalice.
we think that sometimes poverty is only being hungry, naked, and homeless. The poverty of being unwanted, unloved, and uncared for is the greatest poverty. We must start in our own homes to remedy this kind of poverty. From Mother Teresa. Okay, um, Tyler and I are going to um, do a little singing a cappella. What? Oh, we have an announcement. We have three. Okay, we're going to do that first one. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for rolling with me here on a little. I'm, I'm a, I think we're getting a last minute substitute who has to work fast on her feet. <laughs> Yay, Barbara. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay, announcements. First, we have Eleanor for an announcement this morning, our, our board president, and then we have one more. Good morning. Boy, the room's getting fuller and fuller. I love it. I want to first thank the people who came out to the s'mores event on Thursday night. We had at least 30 people here, including a lot of kids, and it was so much fun. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're hoping to have something like that each month. So watch the news. I want to give you some good news. Um, the end of last fiscal year, Summit applied for what's called an employee retention tax credit. This is a credit from the federal government for having not laid off employees during the pandemic. And in the last couple months, we got our checks, one for each of the quarters, totaling a little over $44,000, which is awesome. So with this, and with the savings of not having Reverend Everett here this year, we are, the board is supporting the search committee to look for a full-time minister. So we are very excited about that. And that will cover that person's, the extra salary that we would need until our pledge body is strong enough to pay for it full-time. We'll cover it for at least two years. So that's really, really exciting. Next is going to be an announcement from the search committee. And please pay special attention to this because your participation is needed in this next phase of this process. Thank you. Okay, Debbie and Amy, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so Debbie and I are the co-chairs for the committee. Do you have the slide up? There we go make it uh, official. And just so you know who all the other committee members are, they are uh, Lara Barrett, Jamie Clellan, Pam Kerr, Brian Reardon, and Pam Williams. And it's important that you know who we are because if you have any concerns, please approach us one-on-one -on -one and we'd love to hear from you. This is a, a inclusive community, as we said, and we want, we want to, to hear from you. So we also just want to manage expectations about when that uh, when our new minister will be here. And part of this process is following the UUA guidelines, which is very structured, very in-depth, and they've been doing this a long time. And, and so we're going to be a part of that search system. And so what that means is we won't be looking, we won't be applying for a new minister until the spring of next year. And we probably won't have our new minister until the beginning of the next fiscal year. So July of 2023. And so part of this is just our, in our, uh, our ability to hear from you and your participation in who our next minister is going to be to represent our congregation. And so we've started that. Uh, many of you have done the surveys. We're proud to say we got 92 responses back. Um, you know, for um, a congregation of 138 members, that's really um, a really high number. So thank you so much. And mm -hmm. as I was mentioning to someone at the S'mores event, you know, the survey is just kind of a bird's eye view, kind of big global picture. But what we want to do is we want to get uh, more focused, and that's going to be happening with the cottage meetings happening 
in October. What's a cottage meeting? Well, it's just a, it's like a focus group where we're going to have about 10 people together and we're going to ask questions and solicit your input and your information. And it's a chance to maybe elaborate more that you might not have been able to do in the survey about what you're looking for at Summit and our next minister. And then the, uh, we, one of the processes that do take a long time is putting together the congregational record. And that's all the statistics and data and information about mm -hmm. us. And that's something the committee is going to be working on over the next couple of months. And like I said, we will hopefully have our full-time minister by July 1st, 2023. And Deb, I don't know if you have anything to add. No, nope. we will both be here after service to talk um, either online or over in the salon. Thanks. Karen. Yay, Karen. <laughs> I was fearing an accident or something, so glad to see you. So you are prepared for a prelude now. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, Karen. Okay, I'm going to invite Tyler up now. And um, those of you who feel able to stand, we're going to do the you, you, him together, and then our aspiration. And then, for the first time in a long time, we're going to sing a hymn. So start looking up your um, number 1017 in, in the blue book. All right, Tyler. You gonna sing this one with me too? I don't know the Spanish one. I got this. It's fine. I'm No, you don't get to go yet. Okay, so now we're those of you who want to sit. Uh, Al decided he didn't need everybody standing for the hymns, so you're welcome to sit or stand, whatever you're comfortable. Always. Oh, <laughs> Gosh darn it, boy! You guys are helping me out. I appreciate it. Okay, all together now. May love be the spirit of this fellowship. May the quest for truth be a sacrament and service be its prayer, to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, in fellowship. This is our aspiration. Okay, one shall be seated because we won't want, want a lot of hopping up and down. So we're going to sing this uh, new song that Tyler's gonna help me sing because I don't know it. <laughs> And uh, and uh, Karen's going to play for us. It's number ten seventeen in the blue. So take a minute to find it because so, we're out of practice at doing hymns. But but let's yeah. definitely um, keep our masks on while singing. Okay. Also. <laughs> If you like to, not necessary, if you like to. Okay, thank you.
do that one. Hey, we weren't bad, were we? Please be seated. Okay. Now it's time for Mary and time for all ages. Good morning. If my mic is, there we go. Good morning. Good morning. We have several families here today, including the triplets, first time in the sanctuary. So if you hear little wrestles, that's, that's life. That is life. <laughs> so I have a story to share with you today. I did test, so. Okay, the story is called Last Stop on Market Street. And the cool thing about this situation is you all get to see the pictures now. <laughs> so. So kids, if the pictures are too far away, you can come up front if you want. It's up to y'all. So you can see it on the camera. All right. All right. We got you, bud. Okay. So this is a story about a, a, a child and a grandparent going to church and what they do after church. You get that? Okay. CJ pushed through the church doors, stepping down the skipping down the steps. And outside air smelled, the outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. It actually rains where CJ lives. Oops. So he ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, how come you gotta go wait for the bus all this wet in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but he didn't see a straw. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on the flower petals, watched the rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in and gave CJ a wave and drove away with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got the bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis who always has a trick for you. So the bus creaked to the stop in front of them and it sighed and it sagged and the doors swung open. What's that I see? Mr. Dennis asked and he pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar and an old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. And she made sure that CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped and lurched forward and stopped. And Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always gotta go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Kobe have never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, Nana told him. They never get a chance to meet Boho or the sunglass man. And I hear that Trixie's got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself as he watched the car zip by on either side and watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing? Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses too, the man said, sniffing the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. And Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. The two older boys got on, two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in the back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana sat down, sat down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing studying right across from you. Why, do you. why don't you ask that man and see if he'll play a song on his guitar? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking the strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered. I like to close my eyes too and net. I'd like to close my eyes, he said, and Nana closed hers too. And so did CJ, and so did the spotted dog. 
And the, in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. And he, he saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves and saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky. He saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. And CJ's chest gave a, it grew full as he was lost in all the sounds and the sights, or the sounds gave him the feelings of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. And Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around and he stepped off the bus. Climbing sidewalks and broken down doors, crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors and graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here, he said. She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arcing over their, their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana had always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamps still lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. And when he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, oh, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ, now come on. So do you see, do you see where they went? They're helping to make food for folks. You see that? So every Sunday, CJ goes on the bus with his Nana to help folks who might need a little, an extra meal. So has anybody ever helped, have you ever helped folks? Anybody here ever helped folks before? Yeah. And so has anybody here ever needed help before? Yeah. That's living love living kindness. So that's my story for you today. If you haven't ridden on a bus, I hope you get an opportunity sometime to do it because they do breathe fire. <laughs> Thank you. Now, children, let's, we're going to head back and go do some fun stuff with the garden today. Thank you, Mary. I want to mention, um, as the children leave for RE, that 80% of our offering today will go to the Interfaith Shelter Network. So I'm going to do a, a blatant advertisement by introducing the speaker before the offertory in hopes that maybe you'll up our offertory a little tiny bit. Okay, today we welcome Jamie Ryan. Um, she'll be up here in a few minutes, a case manager for the Interface Shelter Network. Her associate's degree in sociology and her training in substance abuse and domestic violence prevention allows her to break down barriers with individuals and families who are experiencing housing insecurities. We look forward to her discussion with us this morning um, after the offering. So if you are moved to make a contribution to our virtual plate today, we encourage you to do so. The link can be found in the chat box and it will take you directly to the donation location. And for those in the sanctuary, the ushers will be happy to accept your donations in the baskets. And now we'll gratefully, gratefully accept your generous donations during the musical interlude. Today I will play, um, I grabbed the wrong book in my hurry, um, and so I will play Here's One. It's a spiritual arranged by Mark Hayes.
Well, Karen, if that was a substitute, it was stunningly beautiful. <laughs> So we have a short reading before our speaker begins. The reading is from Munia Khan. Home was never a dream for the homeless as they used to have their homes. Living in a home was their reality. Now we need to help them find the lost reality. And now we will welcome Jamie Ryan from the Interfaith Shelter Network. Thank you. Um, do we have the PowerPoint? Perfect. All right, good morning. Next slide, please. My name is Jamie Ryan. I am a case manager for Interface Shelter Network, and I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit about my program with you today. Uh, I work with households and individuals experiencing housing insecurities. As a case manager, my primary goal is to identify barriers, create a case plan, and collaborate with other resources to provide our clients with the opportunity to move towards self-sufficiency. Next slide, please. Interface Shelter Network, also referred to as ISN, was founded in 1986 when the Regional Task Force on the Homeless brought together a group of congregations and social services uh, to provide case-managed emergency shelter at local congregations during the winter months. The rotational shelter program grew to include congregations throughout the region, either supplying shelter space or support. The organization was renamed the Interface Shelter Network of San Diego in 2010. In 2014, ISN added a rapid rehousing program, which evolved into the ISN housing program. The housing program provides case managed, limited financial assistance to assist low income households to either acquire or retain permanent housing. The Interfaith Shelter Network is a unique collaborative program which unites congregations through San Diego County in providing emergency shelter for homeless individuals and families who are screened and referred to the network by local service agencies. In each of the eight regional branches, host congregations each sign up for two week rotations, during which time up to 12 homeless guests are housed and fed by congregation volunteers. Additionally, support congregations within each branch are available to assist with overnights, meals, as well as toiletries and other supplies. In response to COVID-19, the program adopted a new county-funded motel model. This model began on September 1st of 2020 and ran through August 1st of 2022. Case management and meals were provided at six motel sites, two in North County, two in South Bay, one in East County, and one in Logan Heights. Individual rooms increased safety from COVID-19 while guests were able to perform activities to achieve their case plan goals and acquire more permanent housing. Our outcomes for the 2021 to 2022 season exceeded all contract goals significantly. Using the $915,000 budget and providing all case management internally, we provided 15,735 bed nights. We served 173 adults and 127 children for a total of 300 people. We delivered 47,205 meals. Out of our 300 clients, 58 individuals moved into transitional housing. 102 individuals moved into permanent housing. This is a total of 53% of our clients housed. Our program targets the situational homeless, so many of our clients already have employment when they enter the shelter, but out of those individuals, 25 of them were able to increase uh, either the amount they worked or the amount of money they made an hour, and 29 of them gained employment. Case management is the key to success for our guests. 
Applicants are screened by an area social service agency to assure there will be no active drug, alcohol, or mental health problems before being referred to our programs. Guests must also be willing to work closely with their case manager to seek solutions to the issues leading to their homelessness. This is Joanna Bond. She is a two strike repeat offender felon. The day before she was referred to ISN, she was sitting on a curb handcuffed outside of her hotel. She had just gotten out of prison and was eight months pregnant. She had three other children that due to her life of crime and drug use had not been able to parent. A friend referred her to ISN. She contacted us and entered the next day. She was assigned a case manager who prepared a case plan. During those few weeks, she obtained her birth certificate, ID, and other legal documents needed to move forward. ISN also helped her start her divorce process. She was connected to resources for help with her sobriety and was able to apply for transitional housing and employment. ISN continued to work and support Joanna. With uh, follow-on services, we helped her finish her high school. Um, ISN supported and assisted as she applied for college and encouraged her to write an essay for a scholarship from the San Diego Continuing Education Program, and she won the scholarship. She is now a college student. She has been discharged from parole and due to the support and recovery protocols that ISM built into her case plan, she has two years of sobriety and has been able to work on building positive relationships with her family and children. At ISM, we believe the missing link to a successful outcome is advocate companions. That is why we are incorporating this service into our clients' case plans. Advocate Companions are a peer support group approach that enables individuals to restore their identity as a healthy, vibrant, and contributing members of society. Root causes of this disconnect range from experiencing trauma or moral injury from discrimination, living unsheltered, poverty, incarceration, mental illness, and others in order to find meaning and purpose in life. The objective is to partner a personal advocate with a social service provider to address the physical and psychological needs of the individual. Advocates will provide mentoring activities that are appropriate for the individual's needs to rebuild identity and support the individual's social case plan. If you are interested in learning more about how you can get involved uh, with this important work, please contact me. We have an advocate training program uh, planned for November 19th. All right, how you can get involved. <laughs> we look forward to the opportunity to share more information on how you can get involved. Becoming a host or support congregation is rewarding and well supported by our agency. Oh, you can go again. We also uh, always appreciate working with business owners as well as financial donations. Small or large, $2.50 will cover the cost of a load of laundry. $12 can provide a catered dinner for one individual. $25 can provide a gas card to assist with the cost of transportation for a client to get to and from employment. $50 can contribute towards a pronto card and provide transportation for a client to stay mobile. And $100 can provide a night in a local motel while waiting for available shelter bed space. If anyone would like to get in contact with me, I will be available after service and um, I'll give you my information. Thank you so much. Nice to have you here, Jamie. Now we are going to try a gray hymnal song. So let's take a minute to find number 317 in the gray hymnal. We're getting our skills back, everybody. Thank you, Carmen. We can share. Okay. Thank you. 
closing words, I'm going to invite Aaron up to extinguish the chalice for us as I read the closing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, I think we have our closing circle song now. Thank you everybody for pitching in today. <laughs> we will now um, take a minute to uh, get our microphone ready for those who want to stay for community gathering.